with me. Come and see all the wonders there will be in my stories, in my songs, in everything where fun belongs. We'll meet heroes, giants bold, is it lands both hot and cold, have magic tricks to shiver your skin, that's galore with animals in our world of fun. Hi, Piper, hi. Our tale today is about a young man who had lived all his life on a small farm in the remote corner of a great kingdom. He'd spent most of his time in the fields and woods, and he had learned to understand the language of wild creatures. But much as he loved the country life, he decided at last that he must see more of the great world. He walked for many miles, until, very thirsty, he lay down to take a drink from a stream. Oh, that's good. What was that? Why, you poor thing. There you are. Thank you. I'll remember you. Then the young man continued on his way. Ouch! I thought I heard a voice. You did. A king ant. Your Majesty, can I do anything to help you? You can use another path. All you humans keep on walking over our village and breaking our houses. Why, I'm sorry, King Ant. Of course I'll use another path. And what's more, I'll make a barrier so that no one else can come this way. Thank you, young man. We'll remember your help. <laughs> You three birds look a bit young to be trying your wings. Don't you think you should get back into your nest? We would if we could. We were hungry and thought we could manage on our own. When night comes, we will freeze. No, you won't. You'll be snug and warm in your nest. There. And here's part of my lunch. Thank you. We won't forget your kindness. The young man traveled on towards the capital of the kingdom until at last it came in sight. Oh, I never dreamed it would be so beautiful. What's all the excitement? The king is going to announce another contest with the princess as the prize. The princess? Can anyone win her? Yes, but no one ever has. Sixty men have tried already and lost their heads. <laughs> what are the rules of the contest? No one knows. The king makes up new ones each time. What a strange contest. The princess! The princess! What a prize. Well, who will try for my daughter's hand this time? Please, your majesty, if I may... What, you? <laughs> what is your name, Bumpkin? Hayseed? <laughs> yes, sire. You mean it is Hayseed? Yes, your majesty, that's my name. Oh, let him try, father. Well, the contest is open to anyone. If this hayseed wants to throw his life to the winds... <laughs> Please, Your Majesty, what do I have to do? This lake is the deepest in all my kingdom. You must bring that ring back to me before morning. Or else, well, <laughs> you know. And so hayseed tried to carry out the task. He swam and he dived again and again, but with no success. Finally, tired out, he climbed out onto the bank. Now I can repay you for your kindness. The ring. Oh, thank you. Well, I never thought I'd see this ring again. Now I'm going to set you another task. My boy, your second task will be a bit harder than the first. But then, nothing worth having comes easy. Now. Each and every one of those seeds must be picked up and put back in the sacks before sunrise, or else. <laughs> I'll do my best. And so poor Hayseed picked seeds until his back ached. But when he looked around, it seemed as though he hadn't even started on his task. Finally, tiredness overcame him, and he fell asleep. He woke just as the rays of the sun began to appear. It must be magic. Not one seed left on the ground. No. Hello, young friend. Are you surprised? I certainly am. It's amazing. Was it your aunt who finished filling the sacks? You helped us when we needed it. We were glad to help you. Hmm. 
You must be very persistent. Oh, I am, sire. Well, I'll set you a third task. And this one is really difficult. Hmm, in fact, it's impossible. Are you sure you want to try it? Your Majesty, I don't want to live without the princess now. So I might as well try anything. Oh, good. Then I'm rid of you at last. <laughs> now, Hayseed, somewhere in my kingdom is the well of wisdom. You must discover this well and bring back what you find in it. Really puzzled now, Hayseed set out to search for the well of wisdom. He looked everywhere, but no one could tell him where to find it. Months passed, and then years. At last, he reached a cool oasis in the middle of a distant desert. Who are you? We were younger when you saw us last, and lost from our nest. And hungry. The three eaglets. How large you've grown. What are you doing here? We heard about your tasks, and have come to help you. I am looking for the well of wisdom, and I have to take back what I find in it. You have found the well. You mean this is the well of wisdom? Yes. Look, what do you find in it? Only my own reflection? <gasps> Am I to take back myself? Yes, for your kind heart is the best source of wisdom. But what can I tell the king? The king died more than a year ago. And the princess? She is waiting for you. You helped us, and so now we will help you. <laughs> back. Yes, the task is completed. But I don't know how to tell you what I found. You don't have to. I've known it all along. And so Hayseed and the princess were married and ruled the kingdom long and well because they had both found that kindness was the best source of wisdom. You see, it does pay to be kind in all ways. <laughs> When she is a man, her moral center and teachings. When she has cast aside her facade of propriety and ladylike demeanor. When Bob has so corrupted this tiny, fragile thing. Brought out whining, mute, bucking. Some amusement and pleasure. Enticing from within this feral alliance. Crawling and scratching and biting. Everything that put the dishes out to her. At that moment, she is never He said he'd be a little late. Say, do you look smooth? Why, thank you, sir. You look mighty elegant yourself, if I may say so. Yes, indeed. Both Don and Sue look like the kind of people you'd like to know, don't they? Of course, right now, they're dressed for their Friday dates. But don't you have the feeling that they're always well-groomed? Yes, and that's no accident. For Don and Sue, the question, how do I look, depends on good grooming habits. Health, posture, cleanliness, and neatness, plus a daily routine of little finishing touches. Take last night, for example. On weeknights, when there are no day, plenty of time to do little things that make for a well-groomed appearance. Hey, sis, haven't you finished with that iron yet? You can have it in just a minute. 
Haven't you got anything else to do? Don, what are you doing in my sewing box? Well, there's a loose button here. Oh, all right. I'll fix it for you. That is, if you polish my shoes. Well, I guess it's a deal. I have to polish my own. I might as well. Ah, thanks. Clothes pressed and mended. Shoes polished. These are a few of the habits with which Don and Sue keep neat. And neatness is one of the fundamentals of grooming. So here's part of your big question, how do I look? Are my clothes neat and clean? Whether you do your own or achieve it by cooperative efforts, keep your clothes looking neat and clean. And cleanliness and neatness apply to you as well as to your clothes. So after a cleansing, relaxing bath, that's a good daily habit, Sue has a regular routine. And plan time, too, for the finishing touches. Doing your nails, brushing your hair, and so on. Sue avoids red nail polish since it would call attention to her stubby hands. A clear polish keeps her nails sparkling. Once a week, Sue gives herself a complete manicure. Then daily care of her nails is easy. In the same way, regular shampoos and daily brushing keep her hair clean and glossy. And these finishing touches that add so much to Sue's cleanliness and neatness all fit into a simple schedule of daily activities. And now for at least eight hours of sleep. Good health is a rule, for health is one of the foundations of your appearance. Leave some hot water for me. And hurry, I'll have to shave. All right, Don. What to wear? The weather has something to do with your choice of clothes. But Don also thinks of other things. Most of his clothes are clean and pressed, so he's not as limited in selection. How about these slacks and this shirt? What do you think? How will Don look in this combination? Let's hope he'll pay a little attention to patterns and colors. How about this combination? That's better. Now a tie to go with the outfit and Don's all set. Don is putting one more finishing touch to his appearance. A well-matched outfit of clothes. How will he look? Good enough in that outfit. And now another little habit of cleanliness and neatness. Dirt under your fingernails must be cleaned every day. And it's better in private. All right, Don, you're next. Now for a cleansing morning shower. Meanwhile, Sue gives thought to the day. What will she wear? That depends on her activities, of course. For school, choose comfortable, not too dressy clothes. Perhaps a skirt and a blouse to go with it. But what about these two blouses? Which is more appropriate for school? Which goes with the skirt? Fellows like to see girls dress up, but in general only for a special occasion. Yes, choose clothes that are suitable. Suitable to your needs and situation. But remember, 
that any clothes look better with good posture. Now that her clothes are selected, Sue is ready to fix her hair. What to do with those curls she so carefully put in last night? It doesn't matter just what hairstyle you use, as long as it looks right on you. Upswept. Loosely over the shoulders. Just be sure your hairdo suits you and that your hair is neatly in place. And here's something else for your appearance. Eat a hearty, balanced breakfast. There's nothing like wholesome food to help keep you in good health. And that means a clear complexion, shining eyes, glossy hair. In short, that means a better appearance. Don's all set to look right at school, isn't he? Mother, too, keeps a good appearance, even around the house, for that keeps up her spirits. And father dresses according to his work, relying on cleanliness and neatness as the foundations of his appearance. So, for each individual, the finishing touches of appearance may be his or hers alone, suited to individual needs, actions, ideas. After breakfast, Sue goes back to her room for some finishing touches, her makeup. Her powder is one that blends with her natural coloring. She pats it on lightly, then carefully smooths it over her face. And be careful when it comes to lipstick. Yes. Choose a shade that goes with your own coloring and sets off your clothes to advantage. Then, easy does it. Now smooth out gently and wipe off any excess to leave only a smooth film of color, following the lines of your own lips. And finally, a last minute once over in the mirror. Make sure your hemline is even. Don't let your slip show. Come on, we'll be late. Oh boy, at the mirror again. Well, the mirror could help you check your clothes too, and improve your posture. Oh, Charles cup. Thanks. And I could straighten up, couldn't I? Well, let's hurry, or we'll be late. Cultivate such habits as cleanliness and neatness, so you'll be well-groomed. For all through the day, others are looking at you. Your mirror tells you what others see. How do you look? How does Sue look? How does Don look? Health, posture, cleanliness, neatness. These grooming habits form the basis of a good appearance and a well-planned outfit of clothes, well-cared-for hands and nails, light touches of makeup, a becoming hairdo. Oh, Sue, where are you? In my room, Don. Joe called. He said he'd be a little late. Say, do you look smooth? Well, thank you, sir. You look mighty elegant yourself. Uh oh, this is where we came in. And this is where Don and Sue go out for a pleasant evening. Their good grooming habits help them in friendships and in business. For your success depends a great deal on how you look.
God bless Walmart.